What is up, everybody? My name is Justin. This is Forever Self Employed, all about pressure washing and quote IQ. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to protect your business from crazy customers. We're going to go over. We're going to go over four different tools that you guys can use in your business to protect it from crazy customers. And if you stick around until the end, we're going to be showing you guys a secret new feature within quote IQ that's really going to help you. And Mike really wanted to implement it because he's got a ton of bad customers, right, Mike? Uh, yeah, I do. I've got all the worst customers in the world. <laughs> Mike, how did you get so many bad customers? Actually, Justin, it's funny. Um, I actually don't have a lot of bad customers. Um, but just because of the pure volume of work and the number of years that I have uh, been around, uh, you know, hanging around on this planet. Um, since the dinosaurs. Right, yeah, Mike? since since the since early, early ages, the, the, the dawn of, of our whatever, but no, just a pure volume of customers. Uh, you're going to run into a couple uh, cuckoo birds that, you know, are great examples. And so that's basically what we do is we're able to utilize examples from my business that um, are probably pretty representative of, of what's going on in the world, right? Like for everybody else's business, there are chances that you're going to run into some of this, this, you know, like slow paying customers, overly picky customers, things like that. And so because of that, um, you know, that's why I share these stories and, and people are always like, man, this guy's got horrible customers. Well, no, you know, I've got a couple of videos that come out every week or so. And, uh, you know, every once in a while I'll talk about a crazy customer. So. Cool. Beautiful. So sweet. You guys, we're going to be sharing a bunch of tools in this video on how you guys can, you know, protect yourself, protect your business from any type of Looney Tune customers. Same with me, Mike. Bad customers make the best stories and they get a lot of attention. That's why we cover a lot of bad customer stories. But I do want to let you guys know we're going to be giving away this Ford F-150 this month to a premium platinum or ultimate subscriber of Quote IQ. So if you guys are interested in winning this, Check out QuoteIQ to be the first link in the comment section and the description. QuoteIQ is here to help you keep up with customers, send estimates, invoices, and collect payments. And it does a whole bunch more, which we're going to be talking about some of those things in today's video. But be sure, if you guys are interested, check out QuoteIQ, first link in the comment section and the description, and save 50% when you go through myquoteiq.com. Right, Mike? Yeah, you can, you can go ahead over there to myquoteiq.com and save 50% for your first three months. It's pretty cool. Beautiful. Uh, we'll give a couple of shout outs and then we'll jump into, I actually have five points. I just added another point. Just as we were talking, I got thinking, I was like, another point that can save you guys from bad I got to know what it is. I, I can't tell you, Mike. We're going to save it until the end. So you guys oh, stick okay. around until the end of the video to see what we're going to be talking about. Juan says, thank you guys for everything. <clears throat> um, Juan says, God bless you. Thank you, Juan. We really appreciate it. And then Payne's pressure washing. Payne's pressure washing is becoming, you know, one of the most, you know, active people on these lives pain we really appreciate it we appreciate you gotta love karen's absolutely uh so let's go and jump right into the list first things first mike the first way to protect yourself and your business from crazy customers is to get everything in writing and i think one of the easiest ways to do that is when you start sending estimates invoices and all the different things all the communications through a tool like quote iq so uh mike have you ever been in a situation where you know, you've threatened litigation and had you not had something in writing, you know, you probably would have been in, in more trouble, you know? Well, yeah. And, and it's not even necessarily that you have the threat of litigation is I think what you said. And that's really all that you need to uh, do in most scenarios is, is the threat. So with that being said, um, yes, it's very, very important to have documentation, have some sort of contractual agreement. And, you know, a lot of people that are just starting out, they're like, well, you know, I've got a pressure washer and i got a truck. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to go ahead and just wash some stuff. Well, that's all well and good until something happens, until somebody decides they're not going to pay you, until they don't uphold their end of you know, the agreement that, you know, you thought that you had. And if it's just something that you think you have and you don't have something that's, you know, legally binding, then you can run into uh, uh, some issues where you might lose some money and that's not what we want to do. And so that's one of the main reasons why uh, when we develop Quote IQ, we put in there uh, uh, when the customer agrees to the estimate that if you've got a contract or you've got terms and conditions or any other kind of policies, you can upload these into Quote IQ. And with each estimate that is sent out, when the customer agrees or, or declines your estimate, they have to click uh, agree. And underneath it, it says, you know, by accepting this estimate, I'm uh, adhering to the terms. Like, this is actually our second point. 
So I don't, I mean, I don't, you're, you're rushing into it. We can give it to him right now if you want Listen, to. Listen, Justin, I, I'm not interested in your, the rules that you follow, right? These are, <laughs> these are your rules. These are not my rules. And um, you're the one that said we were going to do A, B, and C, and I'm going straight to B. Okay, sweet. So, okay, but we'll cover documenting everything first and foremost. So if you guys use a tool like Quote IQ, you can send estimates and invoices. We just put together this estimate which clearly states everything that is to be agreed upon at the property, house wash, concrete cleaning, gutter cleaning. So in the event that the customer accepts this, they are then, as Mike mentioned, also agreeing to our terms and conditions, which we're going to talk about in our next point. However, it just puts everything in writing from the company name to the customer. Everything here is, is pretty much bulletproof with regards to um, when they accept it, they're joining on, on a contractual agreement to uphold their end, which is ultimately to pay you for services rendered. So step one, in order to protect yourself and your business from crazy customers is to get everything in writing and doing so by sending estimates like this, not only is it super professional, but also um, allows you to document every step of the process. Right, Mike? Yep. You got that right, Justin. <laughs> okay. So Mike wanted to talk about contracts. So the second thing that I want to talk to you guys about is, is your contracts. So, it's, it's one thing to send estimates and invoices and all that kind of stuff, but it's another thing when you can attach a, a contract, which is basically the terms and conditions. And every company gets us with this, right? Right, Mike? You yeah. go and you get a new iPhone, what do they do? They make you check the box to accept the terms and conditions, right? It's like 30 pages of terms and conditions. And the unfortunate thing, uh, I Apple may own my house right now. I don't know because I don't ever read the terms and conditions. And you wouldn't know, right? Because right. Anyway, so the terms and conditions are incredibly important for a couple of different reasons, but first and foremost, for protecting your business, because you can put things in the terms and conditions that are going to be advantageous for you and your business. Like we aren't responsible for these things, setting expectations on certain things, uh, payment terms, right? Mike, if you don't right. pay within you know, a seven day period, we're going to accrue interest or we're going to forward this onto our attorney, things of that nature. Right. So if you guys are using Quote IQ, it's super easy to implement contracts. We'll also leave a link in the comment section and the description for a contract that we use. So that way uh, you guys can utilize it within your business as well. But if you're in Quote IQ, all you got to do is go into the settings tab. From here, you're going to go to estimate terms and conditions. And then as you guys can see here, you actually can have a bunch of different terms and conditions depending upon whatever services you have. So maybe you have a pressure washing business and a lawn care business, and maybe those uh, contracts look different. Either way, though, if you want to add in your contract, you click the plus on the bottom right, custom terms and conditions, and then from here you can type anything in. So, Mike, is there anything specifically that you you know that you really like having in in the terms and conditions to protect you and your business? Yeah, well, I love. Uh, we, we definitely have the the payment terms because that's that's one of the the things that I think a lot of folks run up into. Uh, and depending on the services that you're providing, your terms and conditions are going to look a little bit different. And the terms and conditions are essentially basically just a contract between your company and your customer. And so, whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, you know, we would like to have our customers move all of the personal property from around the home um, prior to our arrival. So my technicians aren't the ones that are having to break their backs, waste time moving flower pots and plants and uh, furniture and toys, you know, off of the porches, away from the house, and then having to remember where it goes, set it back up. So that's one of the things that we've got in our terms and conditions. Uh, the contract, the customer contract is uh, things like that. You know, like if you're a lawn care business, right. And you're, you're, you know, that this customer has got a giant dog and that dog hangs out in the backyard and that dog is pooping everywhere in the backyard. The last thing that you want to do as a lawn care provider is have to dodge landmines the entire time you're on that property. It should be in your contract that it is the customer's responsibility to remove those before you come up and, um, and, uh, whatever, um, <laughs> that I was just reading this comment and it made me laugh. Um, you guys make sure you hit the, th hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't already, let's get the like. Yeah. Y'all broke asses. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, uh, you, you put things in your terms and conditions that are applicable to your business that are going to help streamline the process, make the entire interaction with the customer easier. And this isn't just to protect you; it's to protect them. It's it's this is this is a mutually beneficial uh, thing that we've added in uh, that that all businesses do, right? So it's just a protection thing that's a little bit of extra added insurance that uh, 
that that we that we do. Exactly. And so, you know, you, it allows you to enforce certain things, like we said, payment terms and things of that nature. Uh, and the customer has to agree to it whenever they accept the estimate. So as you guys just saw, we created an estimate for Bend over here. I want to show you exactly how easy it is for you guys to place your terms and conditions in um, to the estimate. So if you come into the edit screen here, you scroll down to the bottom, you can add a footer for your estimate. You can easily add in terms and conditions. And from here, you get to select whatever your terms and conditions are. So as you guys saw, we did termies and conditions. We're going to turn that on as a default. And then we're going to save that. And then from there, every estimate that you create from that point, your terms and conditions will automatically be right here. So from there, all you'd have to do is you'd have to copy this link, send it over to your customer. And when they accept the estimate, we'll go ahead and take a look at that right now, which was kind of what Mike was jumping to a little bit early. They are going to then be prompted uh, by, uh, please type in your full name in order to confirm, by accepting, I agree to the terms and conditions. And then they click yes, accept. They're agreeing to the terms and conditions. And there you go. You now have documented exactly what it is that your company is providing, what they're going to be paying. And then you have the fact that they have agreed to the terms and conditions by accepting and, and basically signing off on this estimate. So pretty much a foolproof system, Mike, like something that just saves your business. And I'll show you guys this here. If we click this, it might open up in a new window. It did. But um, you guys can easily, if you want to test it out on myquoteiq.com, click through um, and it'll easily pop up but just you know kind of makes you a little bit more bulletproof right mike bulletproof is the key word there boom bullets are flying and you are, are proofed of it right something like that i don't know exactly what you were trying to say but i'm gonna agree with you i don't know so anyway get everything in writing you know get those estimates written document those texts and then attach contracts to your estimates super easy once you do it once it's pretty much in there for every single estimate the customer automatically agrees to it not even anything you have to think about. And the the farther you guys get into your business, the more you're going to look for these things that are very plug and play that you kind of plug in and you never think about them again. Um, and that's just kind of the beauty of automation. Right, Mike? That's it. Okay, sweet. So uh, we have three more left on this list for protecting you guys in your business. Uh, and we're saving the last two, which are new features to Quote IQ for last. So be sure you guys stick around for that. Also, if you if you forgot, we're giving away this F-150 truck here this month to a premier platinum subscriber of Quote IQ. So if you guys are interested, check out uh, Quote IQ in the comment section and the description of this video. One thing that me and Mike did not mention in this video also is that uh, for anybody who subscribes for a year uh, to Quote IQ, which you get the option, I'll, I'll show you guys here, but me and Mike will actually do an onboarding call with you and we'll help you get everything set up. So whenever you start your account, you can go down to the subscription packages. You can then go into uh, choose plan and then you can either do the monthly plan or uh, the yearly plan. And if you upgrade to the yearly plan, like we mentioned, on any price point, uh, me and Mike are going to do an onboarding call with you, and we're going to show you exactly how to implement all this stuff into your business, and we're going to help you get it set up. Pretty invaluable stuff, right, Mike? Very. This Hito says, Mike, be nice. You just called us broke asses. I did. I, I love your Tesla, Mike. What's your top speed? Super fast, super, super fast, super fast. If it's even faster now because I just had all the windows tinted. So everything is like super black. So I think it goes even faster now. Wow. That's pretty cool, Mike. Thanks. Boom. Blow them up. Says uh, Ganair Dent. We appreciate it, Ganair. Thanks, man. Um, so if you guys want to check out Quote IQ, myquoteiq.com, it's also linked in the comment section and the description of this video. Get the yearly deal and get the onboarding call for free with Mike and Justin. Really Let's go ahead and jump into the next thing, Mike, and that is the inspection form. So I don't think, you know, we, we've talked about this a bunch of times, but this was something that you put in place in your business. You want to talk a little bit about why and kind of why we ended up putting it in Quote IQ? Why did we put this in Quote IQ? Well, why did you first implement it into your business, you know? Well, Justin, the reason that... The reason that I did this was because uh, when you are showing up at somebody else's property uh, to perform a service, whatever that is, whether it's pressure, washing, window cleaning, lawn care, HVAC, whatever, um, there is always the possibility that there are pre-existing conditions on the property that uh, you should be aware of, that you should make the homeowner aware of if they're not aware of it, because a couple things can happen. Uh, take, for example, 
pressure cleaning. So say somebody calls and they're like, hey, we need to get our house washed. Okay, here's your price. Here's the date that we're going to come. And you show up, you do your job, you do a great job. Everything looks beautiful. Homeowner comes out and you know they're looking around just to make sure that everything meets their expectations and that you did a good job. And they get around to the backside, probably somewhere, you know, maybe it's a side corner, there's a fence and whatever. And they don't get there very often, right? Like most people are, you know, the front of the house, the side doors, whatever, the backyard. And something was damaged there. Maybe there was a, a, a cracked piece of glass or maybe there was a, the lawn care guy had torn up the, the siding on the house with his, with his um, string trimmer. If, if you don't document that, you can get blamed for that. And these are things that that had happened to us over the course of, you know, as long as my business has been in business, there things have, you know, come up. Hey, uh, you guys broke one of my lights. My, my the, the, the light on the fan was cracked after you guys came. Was it or did you just never notice it until you went out to make sure everything looked good? So we started this probably 15 years ago. We were doing it on pen and paper. Everybody had a little... um Everybody had a little, uh, you know, pad of paper and they would go around and they'd make notes of everything. Uh, then we evolved it into, you know, taking photos of anything on, on your phone that were, you know, out of, out of, out of the norm of, you know, what, what broken stuff, things that, you know, stain on the front door. That's, that's not right. Whatever the case is, anything that's that, that could be a possible uh, point of contention uh, issue for you. We were documenting and then we would have that, you know, available for the customer if something came up. Um, and of course, if it was something really bad, we'd send pictures over. But then we started uh, thinking about quote IQ and we decided we're just going to put it on in the app so everything can be documented. You can send the customer a PDF uh, file of every step in your uh, pre-inspection prior to uh, them, you even starting the job. So it's time stamped, it's date stamped. You've got photos, you've got descriptions, you've got a picture of their house. You know, here's the broken lamp. Here's this, here's that. Um, if, you know, if you don't want to proceed, please let us know. But I just wanted to make you aware of all the things that was uh, were going on on your property. And it has saved us a ton of money because uh, it just completely uh, eliminates the potential for a customer to blame you for anything. If you document anything, if you document everything beforehand, it's kind of like Eminem. Okay. Sweet. I was just curious if there was like a defining moment, Mike, where you're like, we're going to start documenting everything, but it was probably just like a bunch of, it was a culmination of lots of people. And you're like, well, damn, like, yeah. Like my guy's like, oh yeah, I noticed that. Well, why, you know, did you knock on the door and tell the homeowner that their screens were ripped on the other side? Uh, no. Okay. Well, we're, we, we need to implement something. So it was, it was again, a series of events that culminated in the uh, need for us to have some sort of formal documentation of a pre-inspection prior to uh, the beginning of every single job that we do. So how to protect your business from crazy customers. The uh, inspection form is an integral part of that. So it might kind of walk you guys through some of the things like first and foremost, to be able to select your customer. That's going to then bring up their property. The technician name can, can put their name in. You can take property pictures when you show up and anybody who gets quote IQ is automatically going to get uh, well, you have to have this tier, but once you get this tier, you're actually going to get Mike's 28 point inspection form. So that way you can almost just plug and play it in your business. So if you got a pressure washing business, plug and play. We also have a couple other uh, templates for other services that we have within Quote IQ, but basically just walk you through things that like the front door, did we need to cover with plastic? Cause every time you have a, like a stained door, you really want to cover it. So that way you don't mess up the stain on it. Um, was there issues with the wood rot damage? Just things that you might not even think to think about are in here peeling chip paint. Like I've, I've seen a bunch of Mike's inspections that his guys go through and all this stuff is on tons of properties that you wouldn't even think of. And it just saves you from that. Mike, like Mike said, that after property walk around where the homeowner's like, Hey, there's a hole on my siding. Well, the hole in the siding was there the whole time, but if you didn't document it, now you're being held liable for it. So in order to protect yourself from crazy customers, you're going to need something like an inspection form within your business. The cool thing about this inspection form as well is every time you fill one out, it saves under the under the customer's profile. All the inspection forms save here in the side tab so that we can always go back. You can always go um, check out any inspection forms that you filled out. And that way you, you have a pretty much a permanent catalog of um, the state of a customer's property before 
you serviced it. So I think that's a great thing to have. And and if you guys are looking to protect your business, you definitely want to start implementing some sort of uh, pre-inspection checklist. And you might not think you need it until it happens, until somebody blames you for something and you don't have any proof. Well, it's uh, just like, it's dude, this is just like, you know, we're talking about protecting your business. I hear people say all the time, um, oh, do I need to get general liability insurance? I'm safe. It's just me out there. I'm, I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to mess anything up. Yeah, until you do. And then you're on the hook, right? Your business, in theory, could be completely taken away from you unless you have the things in place, like an LLC, like um, a general liability, or if you've got employees, workers comp. Like These are the things, like the pre-inspection are, are, and the customer contract. These are the things that are not only setting yourself up for long-term success, because if you get hit with some, some insurance stuff, if you get hit with, you know, having to replace a driveway or, you know, whatever the case is, siding, uh, painting an entire house, you're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that most guys starting off, they can't swing and that will crush their business. So implement these simple steps early on. Hell, you can get all of everything that we're talking about right here, for twenty nine ninety nine a month, I think, right? That's like a dollar a day, Justin. This and, one's a little and, bit more expensive, but yes. Okay. Well, if, is that one in the forty four dollar one? Actually, if you guys go to myquoteiq my you're going to save fifty percent off for the first three months. So you can actually get this for twenty two ninety nine, which is like absolutely insane. <laughs> that is ridiculous. We're, we we need to change that, Justin. I don't like making that little. <laughs> right. You know, for I, talk about, I talk about this all the time. And if you're watching this and you're, you're uh, watching my channel, you know that I talk about charging what it's worth, right? Understanding the value that you're providing and charging accordingly. And I'm breaking my own rule here with quote IQ because we're, we're giving, we're giving it away. We are. So, I mean, if you guys want to take advantage of it, take advantage of it. Like I mentioned before, if you want to, have a one-on-one -on -one call with me and Mike. You can choose a plan. You can subscribe to yearly, which you're going to save 20% on our yearly plans. And um, we're going to do a walkthrough call with you. And we can set that up um, as soon as you're done with that, kind of walk you through some of the things that you need. Um, so let's we can keep it moving. Right, Mike? You good with that? Yeah. Now I'm upset about that price, Justin. <laughs> First and foremost, get everything in writing. Secondly, attach contracts to your estimates. Super easy. Once you put it in place, it's in place on every estimate that you send out. Thirdly, document inspection form, right? Walk the property before you service it. Let's take pictures. Let's go through Mike's 28-point inspection that he spent time building, time, effort, energy, thought to go into all the different things that could go wrong, which you guys are going to get for free, and it's going to be put into a format that you're going to be able to add pictures in and add notes and all kind of great stuff. Document everything. The next thing I want to talk about, and this was one of the things that Mike really wanted to add in. This is one of the new features, and that is blacklist bad customers. Mike, you want to talk a little bit about blacklisting? Oh, I hate bad customers, Justin. They're the worst. They're the worst. I and agree. as as your business grows um, and you get more and more customers, right, it becomes a lot harder to keep up and remember all the intricacies and all the details of every single customer that you're dealing with. I mean, like right now, we probably are going to do... probably like 20 houses this week. Okay. 20 houses, maybe a little more. And, uh, that's, that's a big volume and that's consistent, you know, pretty much throughout the entire year. And so our biggest source of lead generation or, or business is our repeat customers. And so the longer you've been in business, the more customers you have, the more repeat customers you have, you can't remember everything. Like if you're just starting out and you've got six customers, yeah, you remember that, you know, Susie was slow pay and John was a pain in the ass and he followed you around the entire time talking to you and nitpicking and telling you that you did miss this and you didn't do that. And you're like, dude, I'm not even done spraying my chemical on the house, right? These are the customers that are, annoying. And, and maybe these are the customers that at some point in your business, you don't want to deal with, and you don't have to deal with because you've got enough lead flow coming in. You've been around long enough that you've got, you know, a good customer base where you're the guy that gets to determine who you work for, how much you get paid. And then, then you have to remember, okay, well, yeah, that guy was a pain in the ass, but if you've got, you know, 10,000 customers, uh, or 5,000 or a thousand. It's hard to remember. So that's why I put in the blacklist customer tab on every single customer. So if you're going, you know, if someone is calls and schedules, you go to their customer profile, you know, and uh, say Billy Bob here, uh, he's a real pain in the butt. Then you go up to the top 
where it says blacklist customer, you flick that little switch, little flickeroo right there, Justin, boom. And now this guy is marked as a blacklist customer. So the next time you go in there, uh, you're like, okay, I remember this. Now, what I do when I do the blacklisting is down there, there's some notes, comment section. Uh, you can go down there and you can implement, you can just say like, you know, uh, Bill was uh, very annoying and he took, you know, three weeks to pay. So those are some of the things that, that we do. And it's just, it, it's eventually as your business grows, you know, it, it's just one of those, these little things that's very helpful to remind you of, of who you're dealing with. But it's also motivation for everybody that's watching right now. I hope that at some point you're going to be able to be the one that determines who you are working for. Because right, right now, if you're just starting out, you know, you're probably willing to take on every single job possible. And it doesn't matter who they are or how bad of a customer they are, you're going to do it because you want their money. But as time goes on and things evolve, uh, you probably will come to the point in your business where, you know, the stress and the headache and the, the annoyingness, uh, they're not worth it. And that's what the blacklist customer was uh, designed for. Boom. And then just even the customer notes, right? Like we put that in there. That way you guys can kind of keep up with people. You never know. And, and the way people have their business probably operating right now is they're just texting with people. So you got to go back into the text exchange. You got to read over the text exchange. You got to, you know, realize is this person good or bad? Sometimes the text gets deleted. This is how I was running my business early on. I was just kind of like on a whim through the text messages. If I got a new phone, I'd lose everybody. And then I'd get text messages from people being like, Hey, you serviced my property last year. Can, you know, can I get you to come back and do it again? And I'd be like, I don't know what I charged last year. And that's a tough place to be because when you don't know what you charge, you can't, you know, incre incrementally raise the price or you can't even, you know, know if you might be charging them cheaper the next time. So anyway, the little things like keeping up with the estimates, the invoices, the inspection forms, the notes, the blacklisting of customers just helps you keep your business organized. And it's a super easy way. It's like, why not? It takes a couple clicks. You're done. Um, so definitely if you want to take your business to the next level, start by tracking these things within your business. So get everything in writing, attach customer contracts to your estimate, document inspection form fillouts, blacklist bad customers, leave notes about them, right? Write that in there. Before we get into our last thing, which is also a new feature within Quote IQ, uh, well, it's kind of a new feature, kind of not, but I'm going to tell you guys about that in a second. We are giving away a Ford F-150 uh, in this month to a premium platinum or ultimate subscriber of Quote IQ. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely check out the first link in the comment section in the description, become a subscriber. Because that's a sweet ride, right, Mike? I was driving it yesterday. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You actually detailed it. You guys are going to, somebody's going to win a truck that Mike personally detailed. How fun is that? Well, I wouldn't say detail. I, <laughs> I, I pressure washed it and then I took it through uh, the, the, exp the $26 car wash. <laughs> oh, that's expensive. Did you, add, did I did you put any add ons, Mike? All of the add ons. I, I, I spare no expense. Um, and then I, uh, I, I used the vacuums and, the, you know, the spray bottles and all their little microfiber towels. And, and I cleaned this bad boy up for whoever the lucky subscriber is that gets to win this F-150. Somebody will win it, baby. And it's going to be a good addition to your business. It can, it can haul trailers, right, Mike? It's hauled trailers before. Oh, yeah. That, that, that old truck has made a lot of money for somebody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get into our last uh, our last tip for protecting yourself and your business from uh, crazy customers. So I'm going to back out of this screen right here, um, and I'm going to go back into the home tab. We've we've designed this dashboard to give you guys the most pressing analytics within your business. Now, my dashboard isn't going to look great because I don't. This is just a demo account, so I just test a bunch of things in here. Uh, but essentially, we want to give you all of the best tools at your fingertips with this. So you got the profit and loss statement, which you can organize by year, month, and the whole deal. Year-to-date sales, sales by service, expenses, lead sources. We actually have a couple more things coming to the dashboard, but we want this to be the pulse of your business. So that way you guys can easily identify things that metrics, you know, that are big needle movers within your business. We recently added in last open in, or latest open invoices. So when a customer does not pay, when this invoice has not been marked as paid and it's still pending, what this is going to do is, is it's going to give you all of your latest invoices. So this one hasn't been paid in 249 days. This one, 249 days. This one, 249, 249, 252. It's going to give you all of the invoices that essentially need to be paid so you can follow up with these customers and either get paid 
or market is paid or whatever the case may be. But it's just a little extra step for you guys who are doing a lot of jobs and you have a lot of papers all over the place and you forget to invoice customers. This is going to help you to kind of keep everything organized and that way you you can kind of protect your business from people that are taking longer to pay. Mike, you have more experience in this with this than a lot of other people. So you want to talk about it a little bit? Well, I think obviously, um, you know, we, we say it all the time that data drives decisions, right? And you are absolutely unable to run a profitable business if you do not know your numbers, if you do not know where every penny is spent, where every penny is going. Uh, it's, it's just common sense, right? And all of the, all of the key indicators here, you know, like the lead source, right? This is huge. And this is huge simply because if, you know, you know that 99% of your customers or 44% of your customers are coming from say Google, where you want to spend more money and more time and more energy on Google. Um, or if, if you see that, you know, you're doing a ton of, uh, flyers, right. Yet only like 1% or 2% is coming from flyers. That means that the flyer strategy that you're using isn't working. So you do one of two things. You either tweak it until you see the gains that you want, or you, uh, you, you completely, you know, get rid of it. Um, so, you know, the whole thing is, and then obviously, obviously sales by service, you know what the most profitable services that you provide are. And so say roof cleaning is your number one, uh, profitable service, yet it's a very small percentage of your overall sales. Know what I would do? I would say, what can I do to generate more of the most profitable service? And, and that's what these, uh, these graphs on the dashboard will show you. They're going to help you make smart decisions to make the most money in your business. The other thing that I like that they show is how diversified you are. So they'll really expose your business. Like there's a lot of people, and I know probably it's the majority of businesses, they rely on one to maybe two or three sources for lead flow within their business, and they're not diversified whatsoever. What happens when you know, Google ads like raises prices on ad spend or like, you know, you're not getting the same return on Facebook ads. Like you really want to be diversified. So this graph is going to show you that. The other thing that I really like is you're also going to be able to see your total leads imported in. So I would set, you would set goals for these kind of metrics. Like if we're not importing 30 new leads a month, like what are we doing? We're obviously not singing, sending enough estimates. We're obviously not you know, um, doing a good job with some of our marketing. So these things you need to be keeping an eye on within your business. Otherwise you're going to be flying by the seat of your pants. You're going to be making mistakes and you're going to be doing things you don't really want to do. Um, I want to address a couple comments here, but that was essentially before we address the comments, but that was essentially all the things you guys need to focus on. Get everything in writing, start doing your estimates through a tool like quote IQ a, for the professionalism, B, for the ability to track all of these things and know the metrics. Like we didn't even talk about our close ratio, but close ratio basically plays directly into estimates and then how they're sorted. But C, just so that way you can have all these things recorded in the event that a customer turns sideways on you. Next, you want to attach contracts. Super easy. Once you do it once, Every con every estimate has a contract in it. You want to document things using the inspection form so that we can get out in front of customers who are going to try to blame you for pre-existing damage of their property. You want to blacklist bad customers and leave notes under customers that, you know, really weren't good for your business that you really might not want to service again. Um, and then lastly, you want to keep track of the unpaid invoices. You want to see who hasn't paid or how long has it been since they paid so that we can follow up with these people. So all of these tools are available for you guys at myquoteiq.com. Um, Mike Terman with the big 99, man. Mike Terman's always just coming here batting clean up. Still not active on Mike B's page. Mike, you don't apparently you don't have um, super chats on. Yeah, I, I don't need that money, Justin. <laughs> Justin, however, does need that money. So Mike, Mike Terman, I definitely appreciate this. Thank you so much, man always coming through with the 99 spot uh we we definitely appreciate it thank you so much mike t in the building uh mike t is actually one of our uh coaches for uh our program if you guys want one-on-one -on -one coaching uh let us know i can leave that link in the comment section description but we have a uh, we have some questions here can i buy y'all's contract to use i don't know how to make one haha -ha. absolutely i'll leave a link for that in the comment section and in the description once this goes live mike and mike you could also go to pwcourse.com pwcourse.com 
So hey, you get the contract at pwcourse.com. That's actually probably better than me, even uh, leaving a link. But we'll try to do that anyway. Chris, the striping guy in the building. Chris, we appreciate you for coming uh hanging out with us, man. Uh, Chris is a good guy. You guys go check out Chris, the striping guy. You guys give so much information. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Um, Will Quote IQ work well for a residential painting business? My estimates are normally lengthy. Yes, it will. And I assume by lengthy, he means the... um. The service descriptions, probably. Service descriptions, yeah. Service descriptions. So, yeah, you, you, yes. Um, although I'm actually about to drop a video either today or tomorrow about this very thing and keeping things as simple as possible. I, I, I have gotten uh, several painting estimates. In fact, I've got painters that are in my kitchen right now. We're redoing our kitchen. And they're, uh, they're ta my entire kitchen is encapsulated in paper and plastic right now, Justin, so I can't even get a snack. Oh, um, I know you like your snacks, Mike. Yeah, I need a snack and I can't even go in and get and fill up my water bottle. Oh, uh, God, but painters are notorious for giving very, very lengthy um, estimates. And for me, I'm kind of the bottom line guy. I go loop, right down to the bottom. I want to see what the price is. Um, but I'm going to be making a video about that. But yes, uh, you can get as detailed as you want um, if that's the route that you want to go. And uh, it works great. We've got a lot of painters that, that are using the app. And we're always interested to work with people that are in other industries on the app. So let's say you download it, you use it, you, there's anything you want tweaked or you don't like about it or that could be better for your industry, please reach out to us, let us know, and um, we'll implement anything we can. That's one of the biggest things that me and Mike really pride ourselves on with this app is we always try to uh, just make it the best that it possibly can for all the users out there. Juan Wizard says, what's up, guys? He says he's the number one window cleaner now because of the core four. We appreciate it, Juan Wizard. Juan Wizard was, was actually the winner of the window cleaning business starter kit for last month. So if you guys missed mm -hmm. that, where were you? You know, which reminds me, we're giving away an F-150 here. Can you even believe it? Can I believe that we're giving away the F-150? Yeah. It is pretty crazy. I can't believe it. Somebody's going to be taking this home at the end of the month. Who's it going to be? It could be you. All you got to do is go to quoteiq.com, subscribe, premium, platinum, or ultimate, which if you get the yearly subscription, you're also going to get a demo walkthrough with me and Mike. I mean, come on, Mike. Like, it's it's amazing. It's, it's uh, a lot of people's lives, and and they're you know these are these are some monumental uh, things that could happen. Imagine coming and picking up that truck and I'm going to hand over the keys. I'm going to, I'll probably give you a high five and uh, tell you good luck. You you know, high five on Mike. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Um, well, sweet. So five things, protect your business, get it in writing, attach a contract document with inspection forms, blacklist, bad customers and keep track of unpaid invoices. I mean, Mike, I think we covered all the bases on this one, huh? I think we did a pretty good job, Justin. We did. We did. Okay, well, sweet. So you guys know about the giveaway. You know how you can save 50% on Quote IQ or how you can get an onboarding call with us. Anything else we want to mention, Mike, in this video? 50% off for the first three months at myquoteiq.com. So if you guys are ready to kind of, you know, take your business seriously, uh, implement all of the things that we talked about to safeguard your business, as well as keep track of all of the business analytics, the key drivers that are going to allow you to make smart decisions, then like stop being a broke ass, right? It's that simple. People will say to me, Mike, I can't afford to get quote IQ. You can't afford a dollar or $2 a day to invest in your business. If you can't do that, then get out of business, go back to Waffle House or McDonald's or Walmart, wherever you're working, go punch the clock and make somebody else money. But if you're ready to kind of invest in yourself and your future and, you know, secure the fact that your business is going to be successful, this is the starting point, right? Without it, then you're going to be, what are you going to be doing, Justin? Uh, flipping burgers at Waffle flying House. Flying blind. Oh, you're going to be flying blind. That's right. Yeah. And you don't want to fly blind. No. So go download Quote IQ, get it for half off and, uh, and, and watch your business grow. And protect it from bad customers. My name is Justin. It's forever self-employed. Mike, any word of the day? Um, no. The word of the day is naughty Nelly. If you made it this far in the video, we're gonna take Karen out of this. It's naughty Nelly. Naughty Nelly, you want to protect yourself because she's gonna destroy your business. Uh, she is a she's a rascal. She's a rascal and she's real naughty. So comment down below, naughty Nelly. We'll hashtag your real. One. My name is Justin. This forever self-employed. Until next time, hustle hard and get that money, baby. Peace. Peace.